Yeah. Take words out and move them around. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. make I'll make sure it sounds right. I always make a lot of mistakes. Don't worry about it. Should I read this for us then? Uh, no. Just talk. Just talk. Whatever. Whatever you think makes Waltham Watch City, or why it's called that. Okay. You asked the question. All right. Why Why is Waltham called Watch City? Waltham has been called Watch City for many years, mm -hmm. but it's only a part of Waltham's history. The expression goes around, Waltham's history is America's history. And in a few minutes I'll tell you why we're not just a Watch City, but we are America's history. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in 1813, Francis Cabell came to Waltham and put up the first complete factory in the United States, mm. right here in Waltham. Really? And next year we'll be celebrating the 200th anniversary of, of this building, which is still standing. Now, how significant was this building? Well, it had nothing to do with watches. But uh, the building was significant because we were at war with England again, in eight, the War of 1812. And they were trying to keep us from making our own material goods. But thanks to the rapids and the waterfalls and wa on, in, on the Charles River in Waltham, we first made our own paper. There were three paper mills on, on the Charles. And then Francis Cabello put it all together and made our complete factory where rock cotton would come in one end, the bottom, go through its spinning and, and weaving, and finished cloth would come out the other end. That was the beginning of the, of the American Revolution, Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. But more important, it in effect it won the War of 1812 because the British could see now that we could make our own material goods. And it didn't stop there, it stopped. Shoes were made automatic in factories. Eventually, uh, Wagons and, and, and refrigerators and everything else is made in a factory. Now, we were called a mill town for up until the watch factory people moved in, led by Aaron Denison. And, uh, but although we were a mill town, it was a good town. The, pe the mill provided churches and schools and playgrounds for the people. And everybody worked at the mill, and we were a mill town. But Francis Cavallo and, and uh, Patrick Tracy Jackson were very good to the workers. They, uh, they wouldn't hire child labor like they did in England. And, uh, and they hired young women, farm women, from the countryside to come and live in Waltham on, lo on lo long row houses, which are still standing on. River Street, uh, and they'd be supervised going to work and coming home. Hmm. Later on, as in 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, this is the way they'd operate. It was a mill town, but something happened in Ireland that would affect the United States. There was a potato famine, and thousands of Irish, thousands and thousands of Irish came that, did, that, didn't, that weren't starved to death, came to America to work in the mills where they worked cheaper than the girls. So in effect, uh, the United States was mostly English, English Protestant English, but now the Catholic Irish were coming in. That was only one little aspect of, uh, so of that. In, of those people coming in, yes. When when were Waltham watches produced? When when were oh, they first started? I want to get to that right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, you want to cut it off? No, no, no. You're doing great. This is really interesting stuff. Because, um, let's see, where was it? Now, uh, while we were in Milltown, other things happened. Francis Fields, a dentist, accidentally discovered chalk in Waltham. He was trying to develop a compound to fill a teeth because he was a dentist. Huh. Uh, but it was up to his brother-in-law. Francis Davis remained a dentist, 
But his brother-in-law started the Parmenta Crayon Company, he later became the Waltham Crayon Company, then the American Crayon Company, and now it's a division of Dixon Ticonderoga, maker of number two pencils hmm. on the New York Stock Exchange. A year later, in, in uh, 1855, uh, oh wait, that was 1835, was the invention of cotton. Hmm. I mean, the invention of chalk. But uh, in 1855, the Atwood brothers refined crude oil into kerosene for heating at home. They weren't, it wasn't used for cars at that time because cars weren't invented. But those were two big inventions at that time. Now, a second tremendous thing happened, not only to Waltham, but to the United States, in that Aaron Dennison came to Waltham to make watches for the first time by machines. That's the important part. Mm. The Swiss and the English were the leading watchmakers in the world, and they, and they had that uh, monopoly for many years, but each watch was individually made. You couldn't take a wa part out of one watch and put it into another. But great men came to Waltham during the 1854 to 1870, and on Crescent Street, they developed the, this new machinery, never, never made before by anybody. Hmm. And uh, now here's, here's the results of doing that. They now had screws that, machines that could make little tiny screws, each one exactly alike, hmm. instead of checking each one individually, as well as the plates. And, and they had not only the screw machines, they had lathes, autom automatic lathes. And this technology, men would leave the watch factory. Well, first of all, in 1870, this method of making watches surpassed England and Switzerland and the Germans and everybody else. Hmm. And we were making the <coughs> a superior watch. But it wasn't so much the superior watch. The greatness comes from the machinery that they made because these supervisors, these men who who uh, made this machinery would leave the company and start their own company. Hmm. Like Charles Mosley went to Elgin, Illinois and started the Elgin Watch Company. Hmm. That's back in 1877 when Sitting Bull and Chief Red Cloud were out there. The rest wasn't even one. Mm -hmm. And yet, this technology spread a third way across the country. If you watch movies at movie theaters, cowboy movie, you always see someone pulling out a watch. Usually mm -hmm. it's a Waltham watch. But it's more than that. It's a technology that was spreading. And shortly thereafter, in 1884, we became a city instead of a town. So instead of us being a mill town, we are now called a watch city mm -hmm. because the, we were the greatest watchmakers in the world. And that technology was spreading throughout the United States. Now it didn't just spread out in watches. It spread out in other industries, the making of uh, clocks, the making of anything mechanical, speedometers, the making of cars. Mm -hmm. It was all done with interchangeable parts, and that, and that we can be thankful to the Waltham Watch Company people for making that machinery. Now in 1855, 1955, mm -hmm. the watch factory went out of business. But like, like an old person, his deed was done. They, they left their legacy. Mm. And what happened after that, there were a lot of unemployed technicians in Waltham because the factory were, but fortunately, Route 128 was going in. And with Route 128, sophisticated companies would look the situation over. Everything was cheap because they had a high source of unemployed technicians, plus they were near MIT and Harvard, and they'd get some brains. The Raytheon started. Raytheon's a good example. Mm -hmm. They used, uh, with the help of J.P. Morgan's money and, and Raytheon leaders and MIT, they developed uh, electronic systems, which, which would replace uh, the watch system. Mm -hmm. The watches, in turn, were being by other companies were being turned into battery-operated watches. Anyway, 
but electronic companies sprung up all around Waltham using the old Waltham Watch employees, and uh, they they were retrained a little bit, and they became they would breed another group and, and another group, and and that's the way it continues. So today, we are not only a technicians great in electronics, we're great in producing uh, space devices mm. and things for medicine and hospitals and for, for teaching. Anything you can think of is, is being done up at uh, Route 128 today. Mm -hmm. AstraZeneca is up there. And great inventions are being invented up there. Now, in closing, as I said, we were, that's the way we were. But to go along with that, two great colleges also grew up in Waltham, Bentley College and Brandeis College, the universities now. Mm -hmm. But uh, there we were, well, that's how we stand today. We're a pretty well all off uh, city, but that's the purpose of the Waltham Museum. We've been trying to bring out the fact that we're not just a watch city, we've invented all these things. Now to go along with that, there's others that blow your brains away. For instance, <laughs> Power steering was invented in Waltham. Mm -hmm. Where would we be without power steering? Thanks to Frank Davis. Uh, then lally columns were invented in Waltham. Grinding wheels were were manufactured in Waltham by the Waltham Grinding Wheel Company for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now you say they were grinding wheels before that. Yeah, but they were using stones from the quarry directly. Right. They weren't manufacturing them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did in Waltham in 1885 by Henry Richardson. Now, a little bit on medicine. Uh, Dr. France, Dr. Uh, Dr. Worcester in, performed the first appendicitis operation in Waltham. Oh, really? In uh, 1883, because at that time you'd die by appendicitis, but anyone would take a chance on a new method of operation. And right there at 716 Main Street, they developed uh, uh, the first appendicitis operation. We, I think I, oh, did I cover radar? That's Raytheon. Raytheon radar, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see if I missed any, I, I missed uh, any other. But you can see. Well, I'm going to grab a, a pamphlet, which I think has a lot of these items listed in it also. But yeah. I, with all of these different inventions and all of these claims to fame, if Waltham was not called Watch City, what would you be calling it instead? If you could give it a new nickname, what would it be? A name to, to, to put out the phrase, Waltham's history is America's history. Mm. So, uh, innovation is a word they use a lot, mm -hmm. and that's just inventing new, new things. Mm -hmm. I don't use the word too much, but... Uh, that's what it all amounts to, is inventing new buildings, new watches, new machinery. It's so maybe the city and, of invention. And this is the city of invention, yeah? Yeah. And we go, I go as far as to say we're the most historical city in the United States. Mm. If you take all this into consideration. Yeah. Because you're the birthplace, you're, you brought sophistication to it, you brought everything to America. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's, there are city Gettysburg, they're famous. They're famous for one battle for three days. And you get s some other cities that, that are famous for a certain thing. Mm -hmm. But nothing compares to the history of Waltham. Hmm. Very cool. I'll, I'll take a